All right, thanks for tuning in. My name is Timothy Lemoyne. I do have a website where I have links to all the necessary files. That's www.timothylemoyne.com. And uh, in this video, if you look below it in the description, I always have links to relevant areas. So I'm an industrial technology teacher, and in this video, I am teaching my students and you, if you're watching, how to draw SpongeBob. It's a good practice drawing. This is what it looks like when it ends. And uh, what you're going to learn how to do is dimension and dimension accurately, make extrudes and cuts, and then recolor your part to simulate materials. So this is what a finished product looks like. Something that you will need. So I'm going to flip over to the internet here. This is my website, as I said, timothylemoyne.com. And to get the multi-view drawing for this, you can see I'm clicking on classes right now. And scrolling down, I teach... Autodesk Inventor out of my design and modeling course. That's uh, through Project Lead the Way, although this SpongeBob drawing is something that I created. So here are some practice drawings, and uh, this is something that I'm continuously, continuously sorry, working on. And uh, you can see that various ones are uh, Project Lead the Way drawings. Uh, this one happens to be my own creation, and I found it to be really useful for learning how to draw in Inventor. So I'm going to click on this. This will open in a new link. And what you have here are step-by-step -step instructions for a beginner to learn how to add each part of SpongeBob's face. And it includes dimensions. So I'm able to look at a kid's drawing when it's all said and done and determine, you know, how good are they at this process. Uh, obviously, you already know I have a video. And uh, what I tell my students is, is if you feel like I speak too fast when you are watching this, you can go under the settings and you get to decide how quickly I speak. If you think I'm kind of dragging on, speed me up and I will talk incredibly fast speed. through this process. Distance is point two. I personally think that'd be too fast if I was learning. Uh, and you can slow me down to a crawl and uh, you know it's whatever works best for each individual. So <laughs> that's a little too slow. Anyway, so those are options that you have. I am now going to flip back over to my multi-view, and I am going to start the process of drawing this SpongeBob. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is go up here to the top here. This is how I start a new drawing, so I'm going to click that button. I'm already clicked in the, ing or the, I'm sorry, the metric template, which is where you will need to be for this drawing. We're drawing in millimeters, and I'm doing a standard millimeter IPT. Now I'm going to click Create. So I'll draw and start by clicking this Start 2D Sketch. So I'm going to click this button, and today I'm going to be drawing on the XY plane. If I look at my handout, the first thing I'm doing is just sketching a rough rectangle. So I'm going to go to the Rectangle tool, and I will sketch that rough rectangle. Next I get in the Dimension tool, and this is where I'd want you to get this free download from my website. Look at the height, look at the width, and plug in the appropriate dimensions. So here I am bringing over the dimension to the side. Gonna click on my front view so I can see the entire drawing. I actually forgot what this dimension was, so there'll be a lot of flipping back and forth. Uh, my students now have Chromebooks, so they usually keep one screen open and uh, look back and forth between their Chromebook and their desktop computer. Uh, I have a dimension. My next step now is to extrude. So I'm looking at my right side view, which tells me the extrusion depth. And I'm hitting E on my keyboard for extrude, as you know. Um, and geez, my memory is terrible today. I was, I was up very early this morning with my 10 month old. He decided 4 a.m. was the wake up time today. So lucky me. So type in my extrusion depth, and I have his head. Uh, I also am showing colors as I go. So as I go through this process, uh, I'm just going to look at this. I need to color this yellow. And this is another thing that shows me that you know how to go and change colors of things. So review for that. I'm going to go over the extrusion one, right click on my mouse, go down to properties, feature appearance. I'm going to type in Y for yellow. And I've got it. Now I've got Bob's head complete. Scrolling down to what I'm calling sheet two, the eyes right now. 
and uh, I draw two circles and I don't concern myself with size until I start on these dimensions. So back over this way, I'm going to start a sketch and place it on this surface. I'm going to draw a circle. I do like it to come off of the edge. Don't allow it to touch the edge or it'll get constrained there and stay there. So a little tip to help you avoid frustration. And just to illustrate how unimportant size is to begin with, I'm just going to make them massive. I like to center my circle first, and this is a new technique that I have not shown. This is where you really, really, really need to start looking at extension lines. So we know that these arrows are called dimension lines, but extension lines show me where to click. So right from this space here, I'm going to follow it down, and the line that is kind of attached to it, as I would describe it, is the side of Bob's face. And then this extension line goes down to the center of the eye, and we call that the center point. So a new vocabulary term perhaps for you. If I click those two places, I should be able to put a dimension of 25 millimeters on. So here's that. I'm going to go in dimension. I'm going to click on the side of Bob's face. I'm going to click on the center point, And I'm going to move my dimension up, just like it is in the handout. And I believe I got that dimension right. Yep. Because this part is symmetrical, even though it does not show up on the handout, this dimension will also be the exact same. So as I go through this, I'm going to do a two for one. This dimension here tells us how far down is this circle from the top of Bob's head. So I look at the dimension. The extension lines are showing me to click on the top of Bob's head. And then down here it's saying click on the center point and I'll type in the correct dimension. So click on the top of Bob's head, click on the center point, move it to the side. If for some reason the dimension doesn't go in, I hit the escape key to clear the uh, computer. I try again, maybe clicking in a different sequence, maybe center point first, then edge. You just gotta be willing to try some things and not give up. Last dimension is gonna be for the diameter of this circle. And for that, I need to check again. Okay. Notice that I'm not really trying to intentionally tell you the dimensions. I want you to be able to look at a multi-view and find that information for yourself. It's a necessary skill to succeed in this class. Uh, so, okay, there's my eyes. They're touching in the middle. They're overhanging the edge. Everything looks perfect the way I expect. I'm hitting E for extrude. If you click on the edges of the eyes, they're easier to get, and you do need to click both of them at the same time. And extrusion depth is shown in the right side view again. So I am typing in that correct dimension. And I actually recall from uh, the sheet that I need to recolor these as white. So I type a W for white, and it gets me close. There's white. Bingo, bango. The next thing I am doing is going to be the pupils. And a tip for this, I draw one pupil at a time. So I draw the left pupil first, and then I cut it. Then I draw the right pupil, and then I cut it. In a moment, you're going to see why that is. So right now I'm on sheet three and drawing these circles in the center. Back to Inventor, start a new sketch. Very important that you click right on top of the eye. If you click on his face, you're going to have some issues. Click on top of his eye. The moment I do that, you notice that my origin is directly in the center of that circle. I take my center point circle tool. I'm able to start my circle right on that spot. I don't have to mess around with any moving. This would be why I do not draw both eyes at the same time. I don't have a little intersection of lines to get exactly on the center. Are there ways to get around that? Yes, absolutely there are, but I'm assuming that you're a beginner, so I'm going to move on. The diameter of this circle is listed right here. After I'm done dimensioning this diameter, then you're going to see me cut it, and the cut depth is located in this space. So dimension my circle. Gonna hit E for extrude. 
I'm going to change this space here to a cut and the cut depth listed on my sheet and I have a pupil in. Again, check out the handout to see the correct color for each part. Here comes eyeball two, have to click on top of the other eyeball. There's my intersecting lines that allows me to get this placed perfectly. All right, moving on to the nose. This is sheet four. Uh, there is a fillet on the front of the nose and there's actually a little bit of math involved there. You'll notice that the diameter of this circle is 26 and then the fillet is at a radius of 13. So hey, what do you know? To get a perfect dome shape on this, you need to take the radius of your circle and put the fillet on. So pretty cool there. Uh, nose starts out as a circle and then it has dimensions similar to what we did for the eye. So we're clicking on center points, we're clicking on edges, and we're getting dimensions. This one I'm going to explain a little bit less because again I want to see some growth as you're trying to do this. If you're totally confused, jump back, look at how I dimension the eyes, try to apply that new knowledge here. So start a sketch on his face. Do a circle, not at this intersection or you're gonna have issues. I'm gonna put it over here. Again, just to kind of illustrate my point that where this thing goes to start out with doesn't matter. It's the dimensions that control that. So now I'm looking at dimension. Okay, it's towards the middle. You can see where I'm clicking, so I mean, you could just follow along with that. Now I'm looking at the other dimension, 80. Whoops, sorry. I wasn't supposed to tell you. You're supposed to figure out yourself. Uh, up she goes. See if I had put that right on that intersection, I'd have had issues. That's not where it belonged. And again, this information. I've, I've drawn Bob so many times that I start to remember that these dimensions are what they are. Um, my guess would be is you're doing a lot more flipping back and forth than I am. So I'm extruding this. Oh, I got to click inside of his nose. It doesn't know what I want to do. I actually don't recall the depth here, so I have to look back. This is the right side view. Remember that this is showing us depth of the extrusion. And a lot of people are going to get bent out of shape. They're like, ah, it's not rounded at the front yet. It's like, slow down, Tiger. Um, let's take this in pieces. So here's that extrusion. Now, because I'm in the 3D modeling tools, I've just completed my extrude. Now I can go click fillet, click on the edge of this rim. So this is the first time you're doing a fillet right on this edge that's turning white right now. Getting a preview. This is what a two millimeter fillet looks like. But again, we need to do the half of the diameter or the radius. Um, and in this circle, it's 13 millimeters. So I type in 13, hit my green check mark, and there's my rounded nose. So I'm going to change colors of these guys here. Have to change the color of my fillet separately. And I'm moving on to the mouth. So down here I am now on sheet five. And there's a few different ways to draw this. Either way is totally fine. But again, I worry about the um, shape of it more so than I do the size to begin with. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to draw an entire circle and then I'm going to draw a line across it and then I'm going to use the trim tool to trim off the top of that circle. So here's how this is going to look. Here is my circle not drawn on top of a line because I don't want it to be constrained there. Now I'm in the line tool and I'm doing what's called a tangent to tangent line. You can see that it snaps right to the side of that circle. Going straight across and making sure it snaps right to the edge of that circle. Here is the trim tool. The icon is a scissor. And I'm trimming the top of that off. Dimensioning this is tough so I'm going to be a little bit nicer to you on this one. 
I'm actually gonna start out with this dimension here where it says, click on the bottom of the line, use this other extension, click on the top of the line, type in this number. So a dimension from the bottom of Bob's mouth to the, or I'm sorry, bottom of his head, top of his mouth, and type in the appropriate number. I like to do that one first because it keeps his mouth on his face. Whereas sometimes if I start other places, it'll jump off of his face and be like over here, and you're like, yikes. Uh, this one is going to be next for me. So I'm looking at this extension line, and it's saying click the left side of Bob's head. And even though you can't see it, there's going to be a center point on this line. So I'm going to click right on that thing. So side of his face. Oh, here's the center point actually down here right now. It's a goofy spot, but it'll work. Got to just look at my dimension here. Uh, my memory is not the greatest, but my eyes are pretty decent. Okay, so now I've got him placed correctly. And next thing I'm going to do is the width of his actual mouth. So that's this dimension. This is showing from corner of his mouth to corner of his mouth, which basically means I can click on this line. I could click on those corners. It would still work. But I am going to make my life a little easier and just click on his mouth and type in the appropriate number. And then my final one is going to be for this arc. So it's showing me an R, that means radius, and the number showing up there is 50. So I'm going to click on his mouth, click to place my dimension, 50. So the mouth gets cut in, and the depth again right here, okay. 60 would be excessive, I'm not going to go that far for my depth. Just that, green check mark, and like I said, recolor. All right, Bob is nearly done. Now on to the teeth. The teeth are actually, I'm not gonna lie, they're kind of challenging. So here we go on these guys. This is uh, what separates the pros from the uh, the beginners, and uh, my hope is that uh, you'll be a pro when uh, this thing is finished. So sheet six teeth, here's what they look like when Bob is at an isometric angle. And uh, they start out as two squares. You have to constrain these squares at the top of Bob's mouth here. So when I do my little rectangle tool, my first click is actually on the line that represents his lip, and that will make it stay there. So I'm gonna start out by drawing those two. Notice that the dimensions are only on the one tooth. It's because, again, it's a symmetrical part, so the dimensions will be the same for the other one. So know that. So back to inventor, sketch. It's really important you do it right on this back surface of his mouth. Some kids will do it on his face and they have problems again. You know, details matter. So back of his mouth, rectangle tool, clicking right on his upper lip, not attaching to a line like this. And get my second one in there. Again, it doesn't really matter how the shape is um, just that you have them on there and they're not constrained anywhere where you don't want them constrained I am looking at first the height of this square which is shown here so a dimension from the top of his tooth here's the extension line to the bottom of his tooth okay there's my number I'm also kind of looking ahead to the width so the extension line says, okay, from the side of his tooth to the other side of his tooth, same dimension. Okay, I can handle that. So dimension, height. Dimension width. Click on the line there, pull her down. I like to do my things in pairs, but yeah, yeah I'm going to do this here. Because remember I said they're symmetrical. And this is the tougher part here. So uh, this number right here, the dimension goes from the corner of his mouth, which is really hard to click on. I'm going to show you how to do it. And this other one is easy to click on. It would be the side of his tooth or the corner of his tooth would work too. So here is my trick for this. Uh, number one, I'm just going to do a zoom window real quick and zoom in on his mouth. Then I'm going to go up and rotate him back a little bit. So I'm looking at him at an angle. 
And that whole corner thing is a lot easier to hit. I can hit an actual corner. I can hit this edge. Uh, I can't actually get the top corner. Um, but either one of those locations is gonna work well for click number one. So I like to hit this edge. You can see it turn in white. And then the side of his tooth. And you can see that I have a dimension that wants to go in between those two spaces. So I'm gonna click to place that. I do need to go back and check that number again. Okay her in. Same exact thing is going to happen for the other tooth. Click the edge, click the side of his tooth. Bam. I'm going to zoom back out, put him at an angle because I'm extruding his teeth next and I do have to click inside of both of them. Ooh, yellow teeth. That's not good. Make sure you check the depths. If you do the depth correct, you will not have yellow teeth, which would be a good thing. Teeth should be white. All right, so that is the finished Bob. Uh, for my students, you turn these things in as a JPEG. So this is done. I actually never did a save throughout that whole process, which is kind of frightening. Good thing I didn't crash. I am going to do a save as real quick. And uh, my students know, at least currently, that we save to the uh, your own personal username. And uh, I'm actually, if you're my student, don't save it to your desktop. It'll get lost. Um, maybe I just better save it to the right spot to start out with. Here I am on my personal account. I'm going to save this file as my last name, Bob Drawing for Grade. And I'm going to keep this an inventor file for the time being. So, okay, cool, there it is. Um, now I'm gonna save it in such a way where I can turn it in. So, I'm gonna go and rotate Bob. I'm gonna hit on this corner. And if you turn it in like this, I'm able to see all of the major features, the space and the teeth, everything, so I can see like how good are you at dimension and all those kind of things I wanna see. And uh, as he, if he's positioned like this, then you go and you're gonna, you're gonna save it basically as a, a different file type. And uh, the way that I'm gonna have you do that is you're gonna go to Save As, and you're gonna go off to the side and you're gonna do a Save Copy As. So I'm gonna click here. Your Save In folder again should be, for my students, at least at the time of this recording, your username followed by the server address. And you should then keep your file name the same. Last name, Bob Drawing for a grade. In the Save As type, mm, let me think here. I'm actually going to have you do a PDF. So you may have to change this here PDF files. Right like that. And then hit Save. And the file that you turn into me, you can see it opens in a different software entirely. So this is what the thing's going to look like on your screen in Inventor. But if I close out Inventor and I just look at the file, here we go full screen again. This is what you turn into me. This goes to Schoology. This is something that I can open easily and quickly. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you stuck with me this long, you're you're pretty devoted or you're pretty motivated to learn. And I uh, appreciate you. Check out my other videos. I don't know if you noticed, but I have a folder for how to use Autodesk Inventor and I go through a series of uh, drawings. So check them out. Uh, I'm trying to help you guys. And if there's another video that you need me to do or a technique you need to learn, let me know. And uh, I would probably make that video for you. Take care.